Good evening once again, uh, Vinita and uh, Vaman. Thank you very much uh, for uh, for doing this. Uh, really, really, really happy that uh, uh, you are with uh, us. And uh, I, I can tell you uh, more than uh, uh, anyone else, I'm very excited uh, to be uh, with you. So uh, for this uh, session, Vinita, I, I just want to, uh, since there's a lot of talk of food and everything, and you have uh, uh, spent so much time around uh, food, in business of food, uh, should I say, uh, but as a person, uh, as a as someone uh, who has lived uh, her life uh, in different parts of the world, uh, what are your memories uh, uh, with uh, food as a part of uh, growing up? Uh, anything uh, that, that you remember, I, I think? Actually, um, you know, lots of memories, uh, Sanjeev. I grew up in Delhi. I went to school in Delhi and then came to uh, Bombay as a student as well. And of course, anybody who's lived in Delhi, you know, the street food of Delhi is, uh, you know, what we kind of grow up with. I remember I went to a convent school and we were told not to eat anything that was sold outside the gate of the school. But of course, we loved the chana bhaduras that those guys sold. So somehow we could figure out a way of going and, uh, you know, getting those and am papad and there used to be this orange ice cream and, you know, so... Delhi is actually very reminiscent of wonderful street food, you know, from chana bhaturas to, you know, in the winter you can have the hot bhajiyas and so on. And then, of course, Bombay is another big delight with its uh, vada pao and its, mm -hmm. um, you know, bhil puri and the kulfi, etc. But, you know, since you mentioned, I've been fortunate enough to live in, uh, you know, many cities actually across five continents. And one of the things that is so engaging about food is, you know, food is not just about having a great time or satiating your hunger. You know, the whole ritual of food. And I remember again, going back to Delhi in the Delhi winters, it used to be, you know, you had to sit in the sun, you had to have the homemade butter and the hot stuffed parathas, etc. So, you know, the entire ritual around food where families get together, it is so much more than just eating. Um, you know, it is a very special moment of bonding and sharing, whether it is with your buddies or with your uh, family. And it's true around the world. You know, you go to Africa, you go to Mexico. Uh, it's, it's a great way to actually uh, share some wonderful moments and memories. And I have plenty of those. Oh, Fantastic. I, I, I can relate uh, to that. I, I think all of us have great memories of uh, food and uh, Mumbai. I, I know uh, that uh, Mumbai, as a child, I used to come and uh, we used to uh, wait to go to uh, Juhu Beach and uh, eat uh, all we could. Baman, everyone uh, knows uh, what you have done, what a great uh, name uh, that you have created to the films, uh, through the films that you have uh, done and uh, I think uh, in some sense you were a late entrant to films and we missed uh, a lot of you uh, when you were young or when you were uh, uh, a child. Uh, so what, what would uh, what were you like uh, when you when we were uh, uh, when you were a kid? Uh, we want to know. Uh, Childhood for me was uh, actually not not a you know um, not a very happy situation in the sense that uh, I was born posthumously. I was born. Uh, <laughs> May, my dad died in the May of 59. I was born in the December of 59. So six months later, and I was born with a family of women. Um, my mother, three sisters were older than me, of course, and my aunts and their friends and all my cousins were all female. So I was I was born into a family where, where the, 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 I wouldn't call it domination. The female presence was so strong. I think I developed a good fem female side, side in me. Uh, the male, the male presence when it came along, which used to frighten me, uh, I could not understand the, the, the baritone voice. It would scare, it scare me. I wasn't great at studies. Uh, I was more inclined to the performing arts, to singing, to music, to to, uh, to dramatics, and and that that I think uh, has stayed with me for the rest of my life. Uh, and I used to be a very frightened child. So when there was something to eat. And I was listening to and there was something to eat it was put on the table. I was too even if I was so afraid to even <clears throat> reach out and you know take a bite uh, and then to stare at it you know like that for, for 45 minutes and 
and my sisters would come grab it eat it up and, and run away uh, and uh, it it was it was funny and i realized jo gabbar singh ne bola tha jo dar gaya samjho mar gaya so i had to <laughs> i had to jump out of it at some point a point in life on top of it i had a speech defect i used to speak like virus i used to i mai thoda totla bhi tha aur and i and i used to teach speak with a big lisp like that just like virus in three idiots i use that i use that very very thing as virus in the film later on so i used to speak with it and i said and, and people used to laugh you know and make you know i used to open my mouth as to i had inferiority complexes at that time because of that i never spoke i never spoke till i corrected my mother helped me go to a you know a speech therapist and correct that once that got corrected as you can see now the proof is that i don't shut up um so <laughs> so we, we so, don't want uh, you to shut up uh, yeah yeah but i'll tell you when i became, when i started doing theater when i was around 35 mm -hmm. um i went to dubai for the first time and performed and uh you know i realized at that point that you are not going to be just an actor for the rest of your life you'll have to speak up and be part of something like this if your life has got to have any meaning you 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 prove if you prove yourself as an actor for the rest of your life people can't be going on saying you know you did well in this film you did it in that film what did you do with that voice and the, when i went to dubai and after the show got over it was a there was a dinner at a five star hotel and un unpunctured food food and and desserts and things that were on the table that even nobody had even put a spoon into while we were eating my wife and i we were sitting on a little sofa and eating in the corner uh, people would, the chefs came at night would pick up not the chefs i beg your pardon uh, the guys came and picked up the, tr the the chafing dishes and just emptied them into uh into this these big garbage bins and, I, and my wife was saying why why why, why are they feeding people with that it struck me then that something has to be done because they can't they can't use that food in, in you know there are a lot of laws over there and you can't even fly it back to india and you know but i think that at that point i realized that as an actor i if i have ever have a voice we have to use that voice uh, and and make sure that people uh, people like you sanjeev people like akshay patra the people the work happening at akshay patra whenever they call me i'll be there that impacted me so much i can't tell you my hands shake when i think about um uh, so i'm here i am for that very reason but uh, when did uh, you said performing arts you started uh, early but uh, uh, th th this was not your uh, i should i say chosen profession earlier uh, you you no. you dabbled with a few other things right very much so i um well i didn't do great academically so i had to start making money at some point because i never i knew i was not going to become a lawyer or a doctor or far from it or a mathematician i mean wo be tied if i ever had to add one and one together uh, uh but uh, i took up uh, i i worked at a hotel uh, at the taj uh, and i and i went for a job as a waiter and i said you know i'll make some tips i'll make some money and that useless fellow in school who everybody thought you know was so scared to face the world uh the nickname was bichara baman i i was always called bichara bichara baman uska kya hoga baap nahi hai uska you know uh, so i started working at the taj and the manager there who gave me the job who interviewed me for the job rather asked me a very very important question he said so which department do you want to join i said food and beverage he said idiot the whole hotel business is about food and beverage which department do you want to join so i said um, the rendezvous so you mean the, the french restaurant on the rooftop i said yeah i think good very aspirational i must say yeah think idiot start in the basement start in the basement start with room service go to the kitchen below and work yourself up and i think that's the biggest lesson i ever learned in my life that you know you could you could uh, you could be an expert but you first got to pay your dues you could be very talented but you got to pay your dues and i think that little lesson taught me how you got to pay your dues if you ever want to aspire to reach the rooftop you know in whatever you do so did you get to the... i was a shopkeeper for a bit and then of course i was a shopkeeper for a bit and then i became a photographer for about 14 years before before i was old enough to be an actor according to you sir sanjeev <laughs> uh, so what did i want to know did you get to the rendezvous finally i did i did and what i used oh, to do uh, vinitha i used to learn a little bit of 
uh, performance French, just enough to get me by. So I used to study French on the side. I used to go and I used to bring down the menu from there. And that menu never had prices on it. So the guests would never need to know yes. how much they had. Yeah, they never had prices on it. Just the host would be given a menu with prices on it. I said, this is the fanciest that it can ever get. And, and I used to learn the menu. And, you know, I, I would do a little bit of research that when I got there, I would be never be a fish out of water. You've got to pay your dues. And I think that's wonderful. I did become a waiter. And I used to talk out the French with great Elan, you know, you know, what did you, you know, the rendezvous de foie de mer, la crème de basilic, et puis de zofran, eh, you have just good choice. And you know, and, <laughs> and so, so always, the performer, always the actor, always a sham, always a sham, but I shammed my way through that, but I, I paid my dues to, you know, get, get to the rendezvous. I was a pretty good waiter, actually. Actually, the Berman mentioned about uh, throwing away uh, food, and uh, you mentioned uh, about uh, uh, that there is plenty of food, uh, uh, in the world, is there enough uh, food in the world? Uh, what, what, what's, uh, what, what do you, what do you have to say? Why, why are people still not getting food? And so, yeah. you know, um, and some. I think it, the, the world. If let, let's start with the world. You know, there are seven and a half billion people, but the world grows enough food to feed nine and a half billion people. So everything else being equal, as you know, we economists like to say. Nobody should actually go hungry because we produce enough food for nine and a half billion people. But two very interesting things happen to food. Um, and these are not my estimates. These are, these are estimates done by uh, you know, several agencies, etc., including in India. So 35 to 40 percent of food is actually wasted or lost. And there's an interesting difference between the two. If you look at North America, Europe, the more affluent countries, there is very high incidence of food waste, which is, you know, I go to the supermarket, I buy a big jar of mayonnaise or whatever, I put it in the fridge. Then, of course, we don't consume it. Six months later, I look at the expiry date and I chuck it. Or I go and pile up so much food on my plate. I remember going to the U.S. as a student and Baban, like you, I, I, it used to shock me because people came to the cafeteria, piled up their plate. And, you know, my first thing was, are they going to eat it? And of course, several of them couldn't eat it. So it was chucked. So there is a very high incidence of food wastage in the more affluent countries. In countries like India, in parts of Africa, Latin America, all places where I've worked and lived, there is a very high incidence of food lost, which is that post harvest because of poor storage, poor logistics, etc. You know, almost 35 to 40% of what actually the farmer has worked really hard to grow. Um, and all of that has happened. You know, that is just lost because of a poor supply chain from half. So post harvest loss is very, very high in countries like India and Africa. And, you know, if that one thing can be corrected, it would make such a big difference. You know, as we speak, I mentioned 180 million people in India are chronically hungry. And this is before COVID and this is before the migrants started going home. Uh, you know, the, the nutrition and hunger is actually worse now. Uh, uh, FAO estimates there are about 900 million, 850 million people in the world who are chronically hungry, which means they never get enough of the calories, not through macronutrients, and certainly not through vitamins and minerals, which are the micronutrients, which are so essential for nutrition. So it's, it is why, you know, the first goal of the SDGs is zero hunger. And that zero hunger the world is supposed to attain by 2025, and by all accounts, we are going to be nowhere close to it. I uh, want to ask, uh, Baman, you, you uh, mentioned that before uh, you went into photography, uh, you, uh, you were at a shop, you, did you say that? What, what, what shop? Yes, yes. I, I'll tell you, it was, it was uh, my mother, you know, my, rather when my father died, he, we are a family of shopkeepers. My grandfather started the business, my father ran the, the it's a little dukan. It's a little dukan uh, at the, in a dead end behind Novelty Cinema in the Grand Road District, the theater, cinema district. And uh, we had a bhatti, 
and uh, we had a coal coal uh, bhatti coal sega and a tawa and a big kacha to remove potato chips wafers we used to call them we call them wafers yeah so we used to we used to buy potatoes uh, uh, peel slice wash and fry them and i used to do that myself you know wear a bandana and i thought it looked pretty cool in those days uh, and i thought you know that's where that's where my, i met my wife actually she was the only one who thought it was cool the others found it sweaty uh, <laughs> uh, and i used to fry wafers do all that you know uh, thing and we used to sell sell garma garam wafers and it it was the it was something that i had settled down and, and and i i think because i was a shopkeeper for so long i needed the i needed the escape through creativity in some form so i used to write a lot at that point of time i used to read a lot of scripts at that point of time i used to do a lot of uh, read and do a lot of acting uh, uh, reading and workshopping i used to make notes i used to observe my customers i used to see i used to do character studies of my customers and things like that it was great it's just that my my body and my clothes always stunk of ghee <laughs> uh, and i couldn't get it out with no matter how many showers i took that smell never left for many many years and i was well, proud of that i was proud yeah. of that yeah uh, vinita i want to come back to you with uh, with a question that with this pandemic uh, going on and uh, there are many people who are watching us and uh, uh, some of them run their own businesses small to big uh, and uh, some uh, people work in different companies and uh, because of downturn in uh, economy being shut and there is uh, a lot of economic uh, loss uh, personal and business uh, both uh, has happened um, what would your uh, advice uh, be to them uh, uh, what would you uh, say that uh, as a business leader who has managed was also business and an employee that in times like this that this is what i would do for next 3 uh, to 6 months uh, to 1 year what, what would you say uh, you know i you know advice is a big word but you know my perspective on this really is that uh, business is an ecosystem of society you know i mean i can't be in a successful business if my community my society the world around me is falling apart so i think businesses cannot be myopic at this point in time um you know this is a time to really come together and work whether as an individual as an ngo or as a business and uh, you know i would like to tell you that i know several uh, you know business houses in parts of uh, india who actually you know i don't think anybody realized that there were almost and the number varies 140 million to 200 migrants you know that nobody had thought of that were going home that were um, you know without food without water and so on i think it is in many ways we have to recognize the contribution of individuals and of our civil society so i do think that this is the time i think individuals have risen up to this occasion and my sincere my sincere appeal to everybody who can do anything about it is whatever you do whatever you do even if it is chitten chapatis it will be ten chapatis more than they had and you know actually sleeping with hunger is virtually impossible i mean at the end of the day there's so much about attitude you know even when we heard the story of uh, akshapatra you know this whole thing is started with 1500 kids and then you know if you believe that you can do much better and you just get down and you know the lagera ho munna bhai phenomena um it's so much about attitude and temperament at the end of the day that I makes i completely the agree with you look at those kids man those kids are just the winning hearts over out there it's so beautiful exactly. yeah yeah it's so 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 true you know, the other thing is, uh, i would say is i've never been to a school the poorest of the poor schools in the poorest of the poor localities i have never seen a child in a school who is not smiling i think there is so much they have nothing i mean they are barefoot they are running around with their little you know things etc but they are all smiling and then when you ask them you know what do you want to be in fact i was in a school once and uh, you know there was this whole thing and somebody said oh you know madam uh, makes those britannia biscuits and so on so 
आई स्पोक टू द स्टूडेंट्स एंड देन आई सेड कि कुछ प्रश्न है आपका मेरे लिए सो द फर्स्ट आई स्टिल कैन सी द फेस ऑफ दिस गर्ल शी गेट्स अप एंड शी सेज हमें आपके जैसे बनने के लिए क्या करना पड़ेगा लाइक दैट अमेजिंग या नो आई I I'll, I'll tell you you know again the joy the joy I I came I was in America a year year and a half ago for for an educational uh, uh, fundraiser for for education I think just as you talk about e- ecosystem education is part of it including our chef patra feeding people people come to school you, it's so beautifully uh, cyclical in that sense uh, and two kids came came with me went from here uh, to to America for that fundraiser and we had a wonderful evening and all of that and i just said you know imagine two kids in new york i mean that memory they should never forget that memory so i got i called up a friend of mine and said uh, you know i i bought tickets for lion king uh, and uh, i i cry every time i go to lion king i'm a bit stupid like that uh, and i i asked them to arrange a backstage um, tour for these two kids and uh, when we went to the show and i want wanted to tell all the people who are you know so kindly putting their hands in their pockets and putting pressing that button the joy the joy you know you can't buy you can't for the for all the money in the world that joy we sat in the lion king i'm sitting in the middle with these two kids one on the left and one on the right a girl and a boy 11 12 years old and they when the when the curtain came out and that song uh, you know when the el- first elephant came out they were looking like that and just before the show started I said, I don't want to sit in the center. Saying, no, 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 the, the uh, but yeah, up, which may better sit in the middle, sit in the middle. Why you was making? I said, no. After the interval, I'll sit on that side, and then in one point, I'll sit on this side. Because if I sit in the middle, I only be seeing one face at a time. I want to see both <laughs> faces at a time. And you know, it, I, I cannot tell you the joy of watching that play, which brings in great emotion in any case, and seeing these kids and their gaping faces of of. enlightenment i can't all the money in the world cannot give that that moment i think that when you say that you know you can't sleep even as an experiment these people who are going to sleep hungry are not experimenting they don't have a choice you know it's and their life that, it's their life and if we can if we can uh, if there can be so much hunger there can also be so much non hunger it can spread in exactly. equal measure it can be spread in equal measure it's just it can just go through uh, the word of mouth of just the joy of giving because if there is hunger there can be an equal and more powerful human love of non hunger of giving non hunger to the world sorry i get little emotional thoda main kalakar ho gaya hai main thoda nahi 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 bilkul uh, but uh, that's what akshay patra uh, is it's full of emotion is full of stories it's full of uh, joy and uh, it's food for education we have a big uh, surprise uh, uh, we we know uh, that uh, baman is multifaceted uh, and uh, he's not going to make wafers for us now neither is going to uh, film uh, not not is going to say any dialogue but i'm going to request him with folded hands to sing for us Well, yes. you surprise me. First of all, I'm surprised. What are you talking about? I'm no singer. Have you heard that I'm a singer? No. Who told you that? But um, but anything, if it's going to raise money, uh, even if I sound silly uh, across the across the waves, I'm going to do it because I've been requested to do something. My mother always taught me never say no to anybody. Uh, never fuss. God has given you talent, or even if it is a half a talent, if you can you can hit a few notes, and people request you to do something. I'm, I'll do it. Uh, Sanjeev, send me this guitar, uh, and and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing a song from uh, my movie Three Idiots. It was a very sad song in the movie, but I think I I've converted this song over the years. I sing it uh, and make make it inspirational more than anything else for the children out there. Uh, and I hope that you know we all sing together. Uh, it. please don't look at the negativity in the song it's i've always d- sung this song with children actually uh and turned this song which was a little bit of a dirge into a more positive upbeat thing so if you don't mind singing with me wherever you are in whichever corner of the of the world you are sing along with me uh it's very simple to sing and vinita don't turn off your mic i don't i don't want it to go away <laughs> i'm all ears uh, but you you sing too and sanjeev you too 
सारी उम्र हम मर मर के चीली है एक पल तो अब हमें जीने दो जीने दो what can i say fantastic uh, thank you vinita thank you baman uh, for uh, your support fantastic and uh, i can see vandana smiling uh. <laughs> baman there's yeah, a question yeah. from the yeah, audience yeah. what will you not do <laughs> oh no i i yes. I, ca- i can't co- i can boil an egg uh, apart from this but apart from that no scrambled egg also <laughs> that's all that that was an amazing amazing performance thank you and uh, i uh, our audience is ecstatic we have people on the facebook okay. and here on our webinar and uh, believe me this surprise was a very nice surprise beautifully brilliant be done thank, thank, you, thank you so you. much and um, i think uh, what goes a long way is both all of you um, gave your time i just want to thank akshipatra for the opportunity of um, you know allowing us to make our own very small contribution and i'm really touched by all this thank you vandana thank you thank you, thank you very much thank you sanjeev thank you this is what the leadership is this is this is uh, uh, this is what uh, people like me get to learn from so thank you uh, for uh, uh, teaching uh, great great teaching uh, from uh, not just learned people but uh, this humility thank you baman uh, thank you vinita and uh, vandana all your contributions what you do big salute thank you thank you very much <laughs> thank you thank you so all much best. all the best and we hope to see you again sometime soon absolutely God bless.